let's take a look at how Linus Torvalds manages his hobbies, failures, and stresses. In the mix, Linus also talks about kernel development and opportunities for programmers to be using AI and why AI tools may or may not help replace real maintainers. This is a recent on-stage conversation as he sits down with Dirk, who is the head of open source efforts at Verizon, to talk about how Linus has personally changed and the way he sees things nowadays. Let's get into what Linus really does nowadays. But we do see a lot of talk about layoffs of software developers, real job losses in the US, thousands, tens of thousands of people getting laid off. And usually with the OAI makes us so much more productive. And so if you think about people who are students today thinking about co computer science, do you think there will be a significant impact on software development as a career? I honestly don't know. Uh, this is one of those things where I will just say, hey, let's wait a few years to see what the real answer is, because I think it's a complicated question. And uh, I suspect my personal opinion is that you will notice that you will need all the same maintainers to actually keep that project going. And that AI is just another tool the same way Compilers freed people from writing assembly code by hand and increased productivity enormously, but didn't make programmers go away. I think AI in the end will be that too, that it's another tool that allows you to not have to deal with all of the minutiae, but it doesn't make the actual programmers go away. That's, that's my gut feel. Uh, and if anything, it probably makes people more productive, but also opens up whole new areas of development and, and you actually end up with more software programmers for that reason. That is exactly but, what I was thinking about. Um, if, you, if you have all these productivity gains, there are a couple of things you can do. You can say, I do the same thing with fewer people, or I do more things with the people that I have. Yeah. And, and to me, one of the great opportunities with GenAI is that we can do things that in the past, the, this initial hurdle to get yes. to something that you can demo would have been way too big. So from my perspective, if I look at people starting out in computer science today, your ability to actually articulate an idea and create a demo, create a proof of concept yes. using modern tools is just as important as 20 yeah. years ago. It was your ability to, to write bubble sort ah, 30 years ago. Uh, <laughs> but it's, I think it's a very interesting development as it really changes what the job of a software engineer is and how you interact with the system. And I think your comparison with assembly language and machine code is, is very apt. Mm -hmm. Or the switch from C, which you know, some people still use C today, to okay. object-oriented programming languages. But I, I want to actually switch gear completely. We've talked so much about software. Let's talk about hardware. So um, some people have really odd hobbies. Some people, for example, build their own uh, uh, oh. pedals for <laughs> string instruments. So can you talk a little bit about the effect panel, uh, pedal hobby that you oh. have? So the background to this very odd specific question is that last Christmas I started doing guitar pedals for fun, which makes no sense because I have zero musical ability. I had never touched an electric guitar in my life, but I wanted to learn about electronics. And, uh, and so I started doing guitar pedals, first as kids and then designing my own, and they're all horribly bad. And, uh, I actually don't want to encourage others to do that because it's completely pointless. Uh, all modern guitar pedals are all digital. But I did it because when you have, and this is something I do encourage people to do, when you have a stressful job that is high stakes and you feel like, like you need to do something else to relax, you should find a hobby where failure it's not only expected, but it's actually fun, right? 
And it doesn't have to be guitar pedals, it can be anything. For me, it happened to be soldering and making hardware where I knew I was completely incompetent and I actually enjoyed it. Uh, some people think that failure is a bad thing and I happen to be one of those people who actually enjoy doing things I'm not good at because it's how you learn and, and uh, then you really need to expect to fail. And I've been at it for a year, and I still haven't learned. Um, I, I disagree. And, I have some of your pedals, and they're getting a lot uh, better. But uh, it's, it's something I would encourage anybody in this industry, because it can get kind of stressful sometimes, especially with, if you're in open source, at least for me, the most stressful part tends to be people. I don't find the technology stressful, but sometimes when you have disagreements and you really say, I want to take a break and I need to do something completely different, that's, that's when you want to have a hobby or something where, where you can just say, hey, this has nothing whatsoever to do with my job and failing is fine. And for me, it was electronics. And I think there is this, this interesting uh, difference between comparatively very simple electronics and the single most complex open source project out there. So this, this yeah. difference is just fascinating. To yeah, me. My, my electronics journey has actually gone backwards. So I started doing like slightly fancier circuits with integrated circuits and then I started going backwards to the point where now I'm playing with actually understanding how a single transistor works. And my real job is working with hundreds of billions of transistors. And my pet hobby is working with three. So that's, that's kind of my two extremes when it comes to hardware. But I, I think this is an interesting glimpse into, you know, what does Linus do all day? You said earlier you don't write software in, anymore, you're a manager. Yeah. We, we now learned that you play with uh, relatively simple hardware. But what, would, what should we think that you do all day? Realistically, I sit in front of the computer and read email all day long. Uh, I don't answer email. So if you send me email, I can almost guarantee you that I will read it. But I can also almost guarantee that I will not answer it. It's very rare that I answer email. And that, that I actually... I kind of want to apologize, not just to all the people who have sent me email, but also to developers who uh, only see my complaining side. Uh, a lot of people think I'm an angry, bitter old man, because uh, honestly, on the kinds of emails I respond to tend to be about the problems that happen. And, and when everything goes well, which, which is actually the huge majority of the time, I don't send out these emails saying, thank you, that worked really well. And uh, so if, if you don't get that email from me, it, I, I'm still happy. I just don't let people know so much. And, and I apologize. I, I think that is a great moment to stop on the message that Linus is an incredibly nice guy who just keeps it inside. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, inside, I'm really happy. It's just my outside persona, not always. It's been 10 years since the last time we've been here. I hope we come back sooner than that. Yeah. And with that, thank you all. Thanks to the Linux Foundation for hosting this conference and conversation. If you found the conversation interesting between Linus and Dirk, especially everything around AI and the future of programming, make sure to check out the full talk linked in the description below. Let me know what awesome hobbies that you have in the comments section. And you made it to the end of the video, you're a true fan. Don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.